Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good morrow, I guess. Huzzah! Um, welcome to Friday, our last day of the week that you have to watch a video that I made. Yay! I was kind of waiting for the applause there. You guys are jumping up and down in your seats. Unless you're stand up. Some people stand up to watch videos. Interesting. Wonder why. Anyways, thoughts? Let me know. Hit me up in the comment section. Oh, I sound so cheesy saying that. Anyways, um, to focus today, I was thinking, you know what? Let's have, instead of magic, more like a riddle. Maybe, I don't know if, I don't know, I, I, how about this? At the end of the video, I will prove to you that 4 minus 1 equals 5. Okay? Think about that. Now stop thinking about it and wait till the end of the video. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. At any rate, like I said, tonight's assignment, guys, the You Do Friday is... You Do Friday is G, H, I, and J. They were in the last video, but I'll show them for a few seconds here. You guys see that? Two absolute value and two uh, Chrissy Crossy problems. We'll call it a Chrissy Crossy problem, just so you remember what it's called, okay? So, at any rate, you're solving for X on both of these. Two of these problems are going to have one solution for X, and the other two problems are going to have two solutions, potentially. Okay? And I want you to think about why. All right? Think that's what your thought of the day is. Okay? Now, for the I do, I pick two problems, one of each type that you guys are going to be expected to do. Um, it is here. 8 minus x over 3 equals 5 and 5 halves, which is a really odd turn of phrase, but okay. Uh, and then the next one is, oh, that one, which I wrote down on my paper, which for some reason you can't see. I'm getting my adulting sign out of the way right here. All right. At any rate. Let's go with this one. The, the odd turn of phrase problem. Nobody likes that one for a good reason. Um, it's, I know my equal sign looks like a weird zero too, but that's an equal sign. So 8 minus x over 3 equals 5 and 5 halves. Um, it's like calling hamburger steamed hams. Anyways, how can we solve this? All right. First off, you know if you've got two fractions, right? Uh, it can't be a mixed number, then you can cross multiply them to get the answer. So this one's a mixed number. It shouldn't be. Five, five halves is two and a half. So five and two and a half, that should be seven and a half. Let's just multiply it if it's, as if it's a fraction, okay? Uh, or, you know, switch it from this fraction to the other fraction. Two times five is ten, plus five is fifteen, right? So let's change that to 15 halves, if you will, 7 and a half, equals um, your same 8 minus x divided by 3. I'm going to switch colors for no reason. Now, from here, you can cross multiply, okay? You could also cross reduce, all right? 3 times 15 equals 2 times 8 minus x. You can do that. That's one way. Or you could say, oh, 3 fifteenths is the same as saying 1 fifth. You could change that to 1 and that to 5. Okay? Let's do that two ways just to show you. Oh, not with that marker. Okay. So if I change the 3 fifteenths to 1 fifth, okay, I'll show you at the end that it's the same thing. Let's pretend we didn't know that. Okay, let's do 3 times 15. 3 times 15 equals 2 times 8 minus x, okay? Then you becomes 45 equals 16, 2 times 8 16, minus 2x, okay? So you can go a couple ways with this. Um, you can subtract 16, right? Let's do that, subtract 16. And then uh, from both sides, then you've got 45 minus 16, which is 29, I believe. So 29, right, equals negative 2x. Then, oh, it's divide by negative 2. Then that's x equals 
um, negative 29 over 2, or negative, is that 14 and a half? 14 and a half. Okay, so that is your answer. Now let's take a super quick look and see if we did it the other way. Say if we reduce it to 1 and 5, 3 15 is 1 fifth, right? So then it would be this. Um, you would have 2 times 8 minus x equals 5. That can't be right, can it? Would that be the same? Right? Let's find out. Then you'd have 16 minus x equals 5. And then, let's see, you would subtract 16. I don't think it's going to be the same. You'd have negative x equals negative 11, x equals 11. Huh. Let's see, I got two different answers. Can you cross reduce? I guess when there's a variable, because you don't know what that value is, I guess you can't do that. So let's find out. Anyways. Let's put 11 in for x and see if that's true. Okay, and then 8 minus 11 in the original equation, right? 8 minus 11 is negative 3. Negative 3 over uh, 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 does not equal 7 and a half. So that is not right. So I guess you can't do that with a variable. You learn something new every day. It's good to know why we can't do some things, okay? Um, and then the other one is negative 14 and a half. 8 minus, so it would be 8 plus 14 and a half. It would be 22 and a half. 3 and 22 and a half, 7 and a half. I believe that that's correct. So, yes, the answer is only 1, negative 14 and a half. Took you on a little bit of a walk there, but that's okay. So that's that problem solved, finally. And then the next one, absolute value problem. Now, I did say one of these had two solutions. Obviously, it is not that one. So, let's go here. 2 times negative x plus 2 minus 2 equals 4. All right, I'm running out of time here on my little youtube -y thing. So, let's go ahead and hurry my butt up so that way I can give you some answers here. All right, so first off, we obviously know backwards PEMDAS, sad MEP, plus 2, plus 2, okay? You got 2 times the absolute value of negative x plus 2 equals 6 and then we divide this can be treated like a very its own variable divide by 2 so you got absolute value negative x plus 2 equals 3 now you could switch it around and say oh um, and say oh negative x plus 2 equals the absolute value of 3 and go positive or negative 3 or you could just say Oh, if it's absolute value, that means negative x plus 2 equals 3, or the opposite of both of those, x minus 2 equals 3. Okay? And those are both true. Negative x plus 2 equals 3, minus 2, minus 2. Then that would be negative x equals 1, x equals negative 1. That's one solution. Now this one, x minus 2, plus 2, plus 2, x equals 5. Okay, neg x equals negative 1, and x equals 5. All right, those are your two answers. And if you're not sure, plug them both in and see if they work. Uh, x equals negative 1, plug it in there. Let's see here. Negative negative 1 is 1. Most is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Correct. Negative 1 works. What about 5? Uh, negative 5 plus 2. Right, what's negative 5 plus 2? Negative 3, right? Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 2, 4. That is true. So those are both true. And you would have a graph that has something that goes in both directions. A solution here and a solution here. X is negative 1, X is 5, okay? Um, actually, those would be on the same level here. It would just be shifted over a little bit. So, anyways, having a little bit of fun. Now, I did tell you that this is true. It is true. 4 minus 1 equals 5. First off, let's take a look at this piece of paper. How many corners does it have? 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Now, if I take away one of those corners, 4 minus 1, how many corners do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bam. 4 minus 1 equals 5. 
Have a great day, guys.